Okay, fair market value, FMV. This is the price at which the property would change hands between a willing buyer and a willing seller, neither having to buy or sell and both having reasonable knowledge of all the relevant facts. Now, this is a great idea in concept that we use all the time. In practice, it's quite difficult. It's impossible to know because all property is unique. This is real estate. This isn't stocks that are the same. So we can't really, we don't know what that is. That's the problem. So if, so if you allow fair market value to, to be adjusted all the time, you end up with, with, act, with, a, with people making appraisals and stuff that are too high or too low, depending on what they're trying uh, to do. So we have to use this in concept, this idea of fair market value, but it's not the easiest thing to come to when you're talking about real estate, which is all unique. So sale of similar property on or about the same date may be helpful to figure in the fair market value of the property. Figuring the debt, the basis, the basis for depreciation is the lesser of the fair market value of the property on the date you changed it to rental use or your adjusted basis on the date of the change. That is your original cost or other basis of the property plus the cost of permanent additions or improvements since you acquire it minus deductions for any casualty or theft losses claimed on earlier years income uh, tax returns and other decreases to debt. So notice that thinking about the basis of personal property like a home can be a little bit complex because unlike with rental property, we don't have to track the basis of the home as closely oftentimes. We, it'd be good to do that because when we sell the, our personal home, we might be subject to a gain and we have to deal with that at that point in time. But with rental property, obviously we depreciate the property. So we track it pretty closely with a personal home. Then you've got to make sure that you're, you get the whole basis in there, right? So the basis you would think would be once again, uh, the cost or basis of the property, what you bought the property for, plus the cost of permanent additions or improvements, big, big things that you improved a new roof and that kind of stuff minus deductions for any casualty or theft losses claimed on earlier years income tax return so if you had a loss that you claimed because it went down in value or something like that which is less usual to happen uh and other decreases to the basis so for increase and decreases to basis you can see adjusted basis in chapter two example uh, you originally built a house for $140,000 on a lot that cost $14,000, which you used uh, as your home for many years. Before changing the property to rental use this year, you added $28,000 of, of permanent improvements to the house and claimed a $3,500 casualty loss deduction for the damage to the house. So part of the improvements qualifies for a $500 residential energy credit, which you claimed on a prior year tax return. Because land isn't depreciable, you can only deduct the cost of the house when, uh, when figuring the basis for depreciation. So the adjusted basis for the house at the time of the change in its use was uh, 164,000. So we're talking about the house here. So 140,000. You built a house for 140 on a lot that cost 14,000. The lot, the land, isn't depreciable. So we're talking about the building here. So we're not adding the 14,000 as a depreciable component. Uh, before changing the property to rental use, you added uh, 28,000. So 28,000 increased because you had permanent improvements to the house and claimed a 3,500 casualty loss. So because we got a benefit from the casualty loss. We're subtracting the benefit, decreasing the basis. Part of the improvements qualified for a 500 residential energy credit. So we're subtracting out the credit. Okay. On the date of the change in use, your property had a fair market value of 168,000, of which 21,000 was for land and 147,000 was for the house. So the basis for depreciation in the house is the fair market value on the date of the change 147,000 because it is less than uh, your adjusted basis of 164,000. So we have to take the lesser of the two. So we had to figure out our adjusted basis and then we're going to figure the fair market value. They didn't go into detail on how you figured the fair market value. It's basically, and you know, you could do a, a, an assessment 
an appraisal. Let's see, what rhymes with appraisal? I mean, to try to get the fair market value of, of related properties and that kind of stuff. And then we're taking uh, the basis of the property is the fair market value because it is less than the adjusted basis. Corporate is, if you change your corporative apartment to rental use, figure your allowable depreciation as explained earlier. Depreciation methods are discussed in chapter two of this publication and publication 946. On uh, the basis of all the depreciable real property owned by the corporative housing corporation is the smaller of the following amounts. The fair market value of the property on the date you change your apartment to rental use. This is considered to be the same as the corporation's adjusted basis minus straight line depreciation unless this value is unrealistic. The corporation's adjusted basis in the property on that date. Don't subtract depreciation when figuring the corporation's adjusted basis. Uh, if you bought the stock after its first offering, the corporation's adjusted basis in the property is the amount figured in one under depreciation earlier. The fair market value of the property is considered to be the same as the corporation's adjusted basis figured in this way minus straight line depreciation unless the value is unrealistic. All right, figuring the, the depreciation deduction. To figure the deduction, use the depreciation system in effect when you convert your residence to rental use. So generally that will be makers for any conversion after 1986. So makers is gonna be our general you know, depreciation methods once we put the depreciable property on the books usually. Treat the property as placed in service on the conversion date. Example, your converted residence, see the previous example under figuring the basis earlier was available for rent on August 1st. Uh, using table 22D, see chapter 2, the percent for year 1 beginning in August is 1.364% and the depreciation deduction for year 1 is 2005. So in other words, once we've determined what the, the, the amount is, the adjusted basis to put the property on the books at and the date to put the property that was converted from personal use on the books, then it's pretty straightforward in that we're we're doing the same kind of thing we did as though we bought the property right because the the difference between purchasing the property and converting the property is the fact that when you purchase the property you know generally pretty well when you bought it and placed it in service and you know generally pretty well what the cost is because you just paid for it when you're converting the property you've got this basis situation that you have to deal with it because you bought it or inherited it or got it in some way